Um, and that's actually just as easy. So interesting. Tisha, you had a question? I don't know. I know yesterday there was two chats done. I was wondering if they were the same two chats. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> no, I appreciate you telling me that. So yeah, I think that's reasonably working, except yesterday I never shared the screen. So the person that was watching couldn't see anything. So, okay, so what are we doing today? Well, instead of a picture of the data, we're trying to take the data and replace it with just one representative number. Represent, oh my gosh, represent. I don't know if that's spelled right. One representative number. And this is actually what you're already familiar with. In other words, an average. Does it make sense if I took the Dallas Cowboys and I found the average weight of the Dallas Cowboys team and then the average weight of the Kansas City Chiefs or something, and those two numbers were different by, say, 50 pounds? It's like, whoa, that team on average is a lot heavier. Now I've taken what was 92 numbers in my case and just made it one. So the average. And so, you know, you might, same thing. It's kind of like if I'm, oh, I'm going to look for a house in this neighborhood up here. Well, what's the average price of a house in that neighborhood? There's a whole bunch of houses in that neighborhood. What's the average price? Oh, it's 600000 Oh, what's the average price in that neighborhood? Oh, it's 400000 Oh, okay, I can afford to buy a house in that neighborhood. So it's not like, don't tell me the price of every house in that neighborhood. You know, I'm just overwhelmed. I'm flooded with numbers. It doesn't, doesn't make sense. But if you just say, well, the average is 400 then I kind of, at least gives me an idea of what I'm going to pay. If I go there, am I going to pay $400,000 for my house? No, an average of 400 means there's hires and lowers, but they they're kind of hang out around 400,000, right? So you, you already know that. So we're trying just to replace it with one number. And so ultimately you actually have three choices for this representative number. One is the mean, which is really what, the, the word we usually use for that is the one I was just using with you, which is average. But then there's a couple of other ones. Do you, does anybody know, know the other two? You can be wrong, take a guess. Median, that's one of them. And there's even one more, does anybody know it? Mode. So after, after this section, you probably won't have heard of a lot of the things I'm gonna show you, but you probably at least heard of these. Now, collectively, your book anyway actually calls all of these the average. That's why they kind of made up a new word for mean. But out of, I don't know, common, common sense, we tend to say, oh, what's the average of those numbers? And, and by that, you mean the mean. So mean and average kind of mean the same thing. But, it, but in your book, you'll, you'll be asked for the mean and the assignment because all of those are averages. Again, it's just ways of getting one number. Now, why would that be? Why would there be three different ways to do this? That really seems crazy. Does anybody know what a median actually is? What is a median? Yeah, that's exactly right. Like instead of the instead of the average where you add them all up, and I'll show you some stuff in just a second. Instead of the average, you add all of the numbers up, and if there were seven of them, you add all seven of them up and divide by seven. Um, that's that's the average or the mean, but the median is actually the middle number. Now, why would you do that? So it's obviously less calculation. So if you had seven numbers, you just say, which one's the middle one? Oh, it's that one right there. Um, so it's less calculation, but like, why would you do that? Um, I wouldn't necessarily expect you to know that. Um, mode just means the one that's the most and, and, and the houses are a good example of that. Because if you said the average price of a house in this neighborhood is $400,000, but what if there was one house in the neighborhood that was $900,000 and the rest of them were like 300, 300, 300, 300? Well, you know, what are you most likely to pay? Not the average of 400, you're probably gonna pay 300, right? Like you're gonna, that's the house you're actually gonna get. So even though that wasn't the highest number, um, it's the most likely. So. You know, which one am I going to get, so to speak? Most likely you're going to get 300. Um, the median also, just to give you kind of a, a heads up, the median is actually what realtors use. If you go to a website, they will not tell you the average price or the mean price of a house in the neighborhood. They tell you the median price. 
And that's exactly because if you have one house that's really expensive in a neighborhood, like a million dollars, does it make sense that's going to bring the average way up? Well, that's where that mm -hmm. skew thing is that we talked about the other day. That's going to skew the mean really high because one house was a million dollars when all the other ones are like 300 and 400. So that would make the average price in the neighborhood 600, in which case, if I'm the customer, I'd be like, oh, I can't buy in that neighborhood. Well, yeah, you can. It's the, all the houses are three and four hundred thousand um, dollars, but it's 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 a mean of six hundred because of that one one point two million dollar house. So they don't use the mean they because they want to get rid of outliers. They want to get rid of a really junky house or a really expensive house that kind of screws up that one representative number. Because again, we just can't handle we can't handle six hundred numbers. If you look on Zillow and there's five hundred houses in Central Point, you know you can't process that but if somebody says what's the average house the average price in central point which is a little cheaper versus ashland which is a little more expensive if you're from out of town that's worth knowing right oh that's a more expensive town to live in so there's actually three different single numbers that can represent a list and by far by far this is i don't want to say the best because as i just mentioned there's a time for the median but we're going to proceed with the mean because the mean actually includes at least every number. Every number is a part of it. And by the time we get to tomorrow and Thursday's discussion about something called a standard deviation, this one will kind of be the one that you want to be able to do the most. So now we don't have a picture. We just replace all the numbers with one number. So let's proceed. Let's see, how do I stop sharing with this screen? Stop sharing. Okay, so I'm gonna post this PowerPoint. I have PowerPoints already posted, I think in your in your My Open Math notes, but I typically don't tend to bring them up, but this is a place where we need to because the amount of time it would take for me to kind of write all of this down um, lasts forever. So for you Zoom people, let me share that screen. Controls are always up in the way. So again, you'll have access to this. So if you want to write some things down, you can, but you don't really have to. So your book calls this measures of center. In other words, what's the center number of a whole bunch of numbers? Of course, you have to kind of line them up in order, but what's the center? One number to represent the group. Now the controls don't work. There we go. So let's suppose these are the home values in a subdivision. This is a little outdated, but stare at those values and the K means a thousand. So the first one's 125,000, the second one's 125,000. 132, 138, 142, but then suddenly there's one worth a half a million dollars. And so notice I kept the list small. If we're going to do this kind of by hand, we can't have 600 numbers. Um, we got to have just a few so we can kind of understand what's going on. Does it make sense? As I said before, this expensive house is going to kind of screw up the average of these six houses. It's realistically, if you were moving into this neighborhood, you would be one of these houses, right? That's actually realistic. Um, but that's going to kind of screw up the mean. So, you know, who cares? Are we doing this because this is a this is a stat class? Does anybody actually care about this? Well, yeah, you would if you're purchasing it, or maybe a contractor who's trying to decide the value of the house, realtor, people like that. So, you know, this is actually real. Like people get paid to know this, is what I'm pointing out. And so, as I mentioned, there's more than one way to find an average. One of them is the mean, let's see, I gotta make that go away. That's much better. The mean. So, and I will give you a formula sheet for this because we're going to get some ugly formulas soon. Um, but I want to introduce you to some symbols here. So these are symbols that are gonna follow you through this class. And you actually might wanna write this down only because you need to start getting this stuck in your head. There's a few different symbols 
for me. Now, of all the symbols you see up here in this formula, there's only one you should recognize, and that's N. N is the number of data points. Like a second ago, wasn't there six houses there? So N is six. And mathematicians are sort of famous for trying to come up with shorthand for things. And, but the shorthand comes at a cost because most of you look at that formula now and you're like, I thought I understood how to find the average. You just add them all up and divide and now some mathematicians made it all complicated. But if you think about it, how are you gonna write that down? What if there were 92 of them? Like how do you write down a formula where you have to add 92 numbers together? Well, that's what that symbol means right there. That's a Greek symbol and it's actually spelled, and this will be in your note sheet. Like I don't want you to memorize this stuff. But this actually gets used in a lot of math classes if you're fortunate or unfortunate enough to have to move on. But that's a Greek letter, sigma, and it starts with an S just like the word sum. And so it means sum up the X's. And I remember the X's are the variables. If I back up a slide, wasn't the price of a house a variable? In other words, every price wasn't the same. The weight of the players on the Dallas Cowboys were variables. They weren't all the same. So this is basically saying add up or sum up all of the X's. And that's kind of neat in a way, but painful in a way, right? Do you see both sides of that? I mean, I'm a math teacher and I see both sides. I think it's kind of cool that it's such a nifty tight little formula, but then it looks like something you'd see on the chalkboard of like a crime show, you know, some nerds like solving the crime from their, from their laboratory down below the house or something. Um, but it's, it's, it's not, the meaning of it is not complicated. It just means add up all the X's and then divide by how many you have. And then notice there's even a symbol for it, which is also a little bit annoying. An X with a bar over it is one of the symbols for this. And there's even another one we'll see later on in this class, but that's a symbol for it. And there's even another Greek letter. That one's pronounced mu. Now, then again, your, your first thought should be like, wow, this stuff is, you know, hard enough. Why would some idiot make up two different, two different weird symbols for the same exact thing? But remember how we talked about the others, populations and samples? Now, with the Dallas Cowboys yesterday, does it make sense that was a population? I had all 92 players on the team, so I don't have to guess at what the average weight is. I know what it is. Technically, and you don't need to know this now, but this one's actually the population mean. So if you said... If you said this equals 192 pounds, you'd be saying that's the right answer to the question. That is the average. But if you only took a sample, which wouldn't, isn't that what you'd have to do with the house or something? Like you can't maybe see all the houses or if you were checking with, you know, everybody's blood pressure or something or, you know, things like we took, a we can't do everybody. So then if you say X bar, you're saying this is a sample this is a sample mean because I only checked with 150 people. I can't check everybody on the planet. So more than one symbol for that. But what does it mean? Here's some random data. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight different numbers there. What do you do to find the mean? You add them all up. Notice this a second ago, there were six numbers, but this time there's actually, what did I just say, seven? There's seven numbers. That's the value of that symbol is just add them all up, however many there are. It's the same formula. So I sum up all of those X's. That's what sigma means. And then divide by the number of data points. Um, I hope this is a freebie on the first test. Like I want to, I'm going to ask you that. I'm going to give you a small list of numbers. Your calculator that I'll be showing in this class does all this stuff automatically. And I definitely want you to know how to do that. Um, but I want to know that you can do that. And of course, any of us could push calculator buttons wrong. So, you know, if all of us type that in right there, probably one of us is going to get it wrong. And I say one of us, like it just as likely be me. So there's actually eight numbers there. So if I add all those up and divide by eight, I get this value, 34. And so that's one number that represents them all. And if you just stare at it at a glance and notice they're out of order, they're all kind of random, but there's only eight of them. So you can kind of see them. Whereas if there were 92 of them, you wouldn't really be able to do that. If I stare at that, it kind of looks like, yeah, 34 does. Like, look, there's 62. That's really high. Oh, look, there's a 12. That's really low. Like, doesn't it feel like 34 is in the middle of those numbers? And so that's one number that represents them all. And of course, again, it, you don't really need it for eight numbers because you can actually see them all, as I said. But if you have a lot more, then maybe you really do. Um, 
just for the heck of it really quickly because I have it up. So this is the raw data that I had from the Dallas Cowboys the other day. Actually, I'll just bring up the, the one that we had. If I grab all of these numbers as you did the other day, it's such a common operation that down here, not only does it tell you that there are 92 players on the team, but notice right there what it says. Can you see that from where you're sitting? It says, notice it doesn't even say mean, it says average, because that's the language people speak. The average weight on that team is 245 pounds. So that's that's a mate, that's kind of large, right? That's a pretty big number. So notice that's kind of cool. I mean, there were 92 numbers there. If I'd have had to type all those in my calculator, I don't think any of us would get it right. Just because we type one of them in wrong, how would you even not lose your place? So the fact that I can actually get the average is 245, that's kind of cool. And so now I have one number that represents that team. And so I could go to a different team and check its average, it's one number. And if that team's was like 250, then I'd say, wow, that team is on average five pounds heavier. They're probably gonna get control the line. So they should try to run more. You see what I'm saying? Like these are not just nerds bored to death with football, trying to make math out of football. It's, you know, literally I might need to recruit differently next year because my team is lighter than every other team in the NFL. Does it make sense? You'd be hard to make those kinds of decisions. So this is decision-making. This is not just math nerds trying to find something to do. Um, there will be a lab. The next lab we do coming up, I'll be showing you how to find the mean, median, and the mode using, using this machine. Um, you might type this in your calculator just because it's fun. Notice the other thing it tells you down there is the sum. All those player weights added up, 22,536. So that team weighs 22,000 pounds. It's 11 tons of football players. So if there's 92 of them, apparently if you take 22,536 divided by 92, that must that's where 245 came from, right? Does that happen on your calculator? Out of curiosity, is that rounded off? Or is it actually perfect? Yeah, they rounded it off. So what is it really, 245? 245.95, does that make sense? So they rounded off. And doesn't that kind of make sense that they did, you know, and it's like, I don't want to see a number that's maybe that large, but notice I didn't know that. I, I thought it was 245, but it's pretty close to that. So I could do that by hand, but isn't it awesome to have machines that kind of take care of that automatically? And that's really awesome. I think if you, if you asked me to find the average of that team, like you'd have to have a good reason, like you're going to have to give me $10 or something like, I'm not going to just do that. So, okay, that makes sense. So what about the median? The median, as Tisha said, is the midpoint or the middle observation when they are ordered from smallest to largest. Does it make sense you gotta put them in order? Because the middle number makes no sense if they're just in whatever order they happen to be in. Like you gotta put them in order in order to find the middle number. So you got to put them in order. And again, if I had 92 numbers, I can't really do that myself, right? I, I mean, but keep in mind, it hasn't been that long that we've had computers. So, you know, people did have to do this by hand for years, but that's, man, how long would it take if you had 92 football player numbers in random order to actually get them in the right order, especially if you had to write them down and erase them and stuff. Now, this happens to be kind of tricky though. Just to make up a quick example on the board, if I have the numbers five, seven, and 13, does it make sense that's the middle number? It's really obvious. But what if the numbers were six, eight, 12, and 15? Now what's the middle number? Yeah, does it make sense? It's kind of like if, if there's an odd number, then the middle number is really easy to find. But if it's an even number, then it's kind of like, well, what do I do with those? Because those are like the middle numbers. There isn't a middle number. What do you think, what, what should we do? What do you think we should do? Yeah, like, yeah, find the average of them. That's exactly what you do. Um, somebody could say there's two medians and list them both. But to keep it simple, if you just added them up and divided by two, we'll take the average of them. Then the median of this list would actually be the, and you notice you don't even have to do the math. You can kind of see it's 10. 10 is clearly in the middle of those two numbers. 
So here the median would be would be seven, but here it would actually be 10. But do you see how the median doesn't care? Like what if this number right here was 73? The median is still seven. So if this is a really expensive house, notice how it didn't screw up the, the one number that's gonna represent the group. Expensive neighborhood, $5 million house, $7 million house, $73 million house. That's probably a better number for the average house in that neighborhood than if you were to actually add all three of them and divide by three. Again, do you see the value of what a median is doing? And I'm saying all of this on the slide. So here's the data, I got it in order. Notice to make it easier for you, I said this is number one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's actually 10 numbers over here. So sort them. If N is odd, the median is. And notice in your book, we'll kind of give you formulas about this because Notice the example I put on the board is really easy because there's only three of them, but what if there were 97 of them? Does it make sense to be kind of hard to find the middle? You can't just see it. So it's like, how do you find it? Well, you could actually do this with a formula. So notice here N is 10. So if it's odd, ours isn't odd. If it's odd, like this one is over here, notice this is odd, there's nine of them. Then how do you find the middle number? You take n which is 9 plus 1 which is 10 10 divided by 2 is 5 and so it's the fifth number on the list you see that's kind of cool it actually worked notice 99 really is the middle there n plus 1 divided by 2 so if you had an excel list that was really long and you wanted to find the middle number that's kind of a pain and so you could actually use that little formula you add 1 to the number and divide by 2 and you found the middle number but what if it's even? Notice it's the same exact formula, n plus one divided by two, 10 plus one, because this has got 10 numbers in it. 10 plus one is 11, 11 divided by two is five and a half. And so you go to the five and a half location. Oh, I'm in between these two numbers. And then you've got to average them as Shelly was sharp enough to either guess or knew. So I average 99 and 100, add 101, add those up, divide by two, oh, I get 100. So this list over here, the median number is 100. This list over here, it's 99. Now, if I ask you on a test to do this by hand, the list is gonna be really small like that. So you could count it. Notice you wouldn't even, you don't even have to do this. If I backed up a slide or two, I can't write on this, but does it make sense that I could kind of cross off the top one, cross off the bottom one, cross off the second one, cross off the second one and kind of move to the middle and not even use that formula? So actually I'm not sure which one I prefer. I don't like formulas because it's just one more thing I'm not gonna know if I ever need to use this because it's gonna be six months from now, right? But if I'm sitting in this class and I have a formula sheet and it's on there, oh, maybe I'll use it. If I did it every day, then maybe that formula is posted on my desk and I can use it. Or we have Excel, which actually finds it automatically. You can just put all the numbers in there, not even in order, and just say, what's the median? And it'll tell you, that's, kinda, that's even better, right? So again, you'll have access to this slide, so you can use this for your assignment if you want. Let's see, this thing has got to go somewhere else. So I'd like you just quickly to do that. That's a small enough list. You have, it's out of order. This is an example of something I could give you on a test. I could say, find the mean and find the median. And notice I made this one at least somewhat realistic. There's eight nations here. This is their CO2, carbon dioxide, pollution level, metric tons per person. None of us understand like is 19.17 a big number? Like we don't have any sense of what this means, but notice there's tiny numbers, 0.2, and there's huge numbers, 19.7. But punch buttons in your calculator. Can you find the mean and the median of those numbers? Write them down on a piece of scratch paper. There's few enough that you can handle it.
But again, with respect to yesterday's discussion, you do have to be careful with what you type in your calculator to get the mean. I typed in, well, the formula. You should know this from yesterday's discussion, but I just wrote number plus number plus number. Now, just like me, just like you, I had to look up, look down, look up, look down. There's a good chance I typed one of those eight numbers wrong. Even in a room this size, one of us typed them in wrong, right? And then I said divided by eight. And I get this number. But if you're paying attention, is the, can the average, the mean of those numbers be 36? I mean, that's, that's bigger than any number up there. Like, don't write that on a test. Like at least write, at least write down 36 and go, clearly my answer is wrong because look at the numbers. There isn't one of them that's that big. That can't possibly be the mean. I screwed up, but I don't know why. I will actually give you points for that on a test. Like know that you don't know, make sense of this stuff. The order of operations. Remember the formula. There was a there was a sum of all the x's, but then it had a division sign, and so it's number plus number plus number plus number plus number with a giant division sign. And so, as I hope you know, you really have got to go in here and add all those numbers up first, don't you? And then divide by eight. Now, again, I might have typed it in wrong too, but. I think the answer is 4.6, but I'm not really sure. I saw a couple of you nod, so maybe I didn't type it in wrong. But you know, does that number look like it's in the middle? Now, my first thought was, wasn't those one of those 19.7? That seems really big. I, I would have thought the average would be more like 10. But if I look at the list again, where there are quite a few small numbers that would kind of drag that down, was 19.7 just one really large number? You know, is that what was happening? And as I said before, you won't be able to see this because there's the screen isn't large enough to show all of this. But remember, you can go in here and right above delete here, it says insert. I could insert a parenthesis at the start of it and a parenthesis at the beginning, insert a parenthesis there, and then I'll get the right answer. Because remember, that's what parentheses are, is, if, is it's me telling you, hey, I wrote that formula in there. I want you to do that first, parentheses are first, and then divide by eight. So you can type the whole thing in if you want to. Cool, so yeah, you should have got 4.6. What about for the median? Did you get 1.5? Notice how different those are. Those aren't the same number, yet they're both called, in your book, those are both called the average. The average pollution level is 4.6. No, the average pollution level is 1.5. Those are both true statements. Which one is better? They're both one number to represent the group. Which one should we be using here? If you're trying to be, you know, honest. As I, as I mentioned, sure enough, look, there's a whole bunch of small ones, 1 1.8, 1 1.2, 0 0.7, 0 0.2, 2 0.3, a bunch of small ones. Notice how that 19.7 is alone, a really, really large number. Do you see how that skewed the mean up? That's what made the mean so high. So this is like an outlier kind of number. This 19.7 is huge. So maybe for that reason, maybe 1.5 is actually the better number to represent the group in this case, because that one is really high or maybe that maybe no no that's one of the pollution levels and so it should be included and therefore maybe the better answer is 4.6 it's not obvious which one to pick and so there's 10 there was eight numbers here right so you had to average the middle two numbers you weren't able just to look at it and see it
Can you make sense of that top statement? The mean and the median of a symmetric distribution. <clears throat> We'd like to use the mean because it includes every number. I mean, everybody gets a voice, right? So we'd like to use the mean, but if it's not symmetric, I'll write this on the board so you guys won't be able to see it who are watching, but but would you agree this is not symmetric? The median number might be here, but because there's some really high scores here, does it make sense that's going to skew the mean out to the right? That's why we actually called that skewed right, not skewed left. It's because there's one really large number out here that made the mean get a lot higher. That's exactly what we just saw. Whereas if it was symmetric, more symmetrical like this, then they're actually both going to be really close together. That's why the shape of the graph is kind of important. If you looked at your bar graph and it looked like this, then you're going to get kind of a different answer for the mean and the median, and you'll have to decide which one to use in the real world. But if it's kind of symmetrical, eh, who cares? They're about the same answer anyway. So this is putting into words what I just wrote on the board. In a skewed distribution, the mean is further out in the tail than the median will be. Otherwise, they're pretty close together. So there's a sort of a formal picture of it. Do you, do you find yourself going, oh, yeah, I can see that now? Do you kind of understand why that would be the case? Do you see that this group right here had some really tiny numbers in it, and those tiny numbers mean made the mean be a lot lower than it otherwise would have been? So this is like a neighborhood that has some really junky houses in it, or maybe there's no, there's lots that don't have any houses on them at all. So the mean in that neighborhood is going to be kind of, kind of not, not very accurate. So if the visual of the graph is skewed, like these two are, the median is actually a better number. And that's what happens with house prices. That's why they only use the median for house prices. Remember, you're just trying to find one number that represents all of them, and honestly. So you'd prefer to use the mean if you can, because it includes all the numbers, but if the distribution is skewed, maybe you should use the median. That's the idea. So it's resistant to large numbers. When I changed this number to 73, the median wasn't, it was resistant to that. It didn't care. This didn't care if that was 73, it's still seven. That's the idea there. So the median is resistant to outliers, but the mean is not. You agree with that? That concept makes sense now? I'm, I'm, I'm not interested in a memorized understanding of this. I'm interested to kind of have a feel for it. I'm not going to ask tricky questions like this on the test. I could word this in such a way. I could word a question on the test that you wouldn't get right. And you might see some of those types of questions in my open math, but you're not going to see them on a test that I give. Lastly, the mode. As I said before, it's just the one that occurs the most often. It's the tallest bar in the bar graph. not super important. You're not going to see that very often. Okay, so but let's just stare at, since we were staring at this data yesterday a little bit, um, do you see how, hey, look, there's a couple people that weigh 200 pounds. Maybe that's the mode, but let's keep looking down. Oh, look, there's three people that weighed 205 pounds. 
that's the new mode. Would you agree? So maybe it's 205. That's the weight that occurs the most often, but I got to keep looking, right? Is there anybody that beats that? Oh, uh oh, there's another one that occurred three times. So now is it 205 or is it 210? You see what I'm saying? That's kind of kind of a problem. Like there's not a clear winner. Um, I don't think I'll go down the entire list. Uh oh, there's even worse. There's another one. So now we have 205, 210, and 220 that all have three. So now I'm really confused as to what to do. Now what I'm hoping is somebody gets to four so that I can kind of ignore all those. Otherwise, I feel really confused. Ah, we did find one. So does it make sense now the mode is 225? Like we've, we have a clear answer to the question, but maybe there's more down below. So that's why this gets a little bit muddy. Sometimes it's kind of Sometimes it's clear and sometimes it's not. But really think of this as like gambling. Like if you were to pick one player and I was to say, what do you think that player weighs? Does it make sense 225 right now would be the best choice? Because most more players weigh that than anything else. Think of it as kind of like gambling. What's the most likely? Or if you're going to buy a house in a neighborhood, what's the most likely amount you're going to pay? Well, the one that the most houses that are for sale, like that's the most likely. So this is not as useful. Um, notice from the bar graph. The bar graph doesn't list every single weight, but notice most people were in this range right here. They were in kind of that 185 to 209 range. So that's where most of the players hung out. And then it got sort of less likely as you got heavier. And the least likely was in this range here. So that's the idea behind mode. Um, just to mention this, let's say this was the answer. I'm going to turn both of these a different color just so that they kind of stand out. Let's say we look through the whole list and that's the answer we came up with. Like all the rest of them were no matches or maybe two, two matches, but that's it. There's two of them, 205 and 210. What should you say? Well, one answer is there's no mode at all. There isn't a most often because two people had the same answer. Or you could say, no, there's actually two modes. One of them's 205 and one's 210. Conceptually, those are both fine. In our case though, it even got worse because at least when we were here, we're like, oh, great, there's even another one. So now there's three modes. Or again, there's no modes. There isn't anybody that occurred most often. So just to show you this all in one place, because this is kind of interesting, let's just see what happens here. I'm going to, I'll do something that I'm going to do in the next lab. Because as I said, those are in order, but there's still 92 of them. So it's actually very hard for me to to see everything, right? It's like, it's kind of time consuming. So fortunately there are commands, equals, except for Excel is more practical. So the command is not mean. Notice if I start typing mean, there isn't one. They're actually using the word average. So average is the command. It'll do it without me having to do it myself. And notice it says, what's, what do you do? You type number, common number, common number, common number. You mean I gotta go up here and type 185 comma 190 comma 190 comma 190 comma 192 comma 193 and like type all of those single numbers out. Well, if that was what I had to do, that'd be really painful. Fortunately, what you can do is, do you agree that this 80, 185 here is in cell B3? And then if I go down to the last number, notice it's in cell B94. You can actually type this. You can say B3 colon B94. Basically, I'm saying the numbers that I want you to find the average of, that's where they're, that's where they are. They're everywhere from B3 to B94. And notice it even kind of put a box around it to show what I typed so that I can kind of see is that what I wanted? Notice the boxes around all those numbers. And sure enough, it says what it already told us at the bottom. Notice it's rounded off, but it says 245. And so that's cool. There's also a command called median, the middle number. Remember this list, actually let's try to find it ourselves. Um, notice this is a little tricky because this started with not with one. So that little N plus one formula is not gonna work very well, but I have 92 numbers. And so I gotta find the middle of that. So let's see if it 92 and a half would be 46. So there's like 46 numbers on the top and 46 numbers on the bottom. Do you agree with that? So I'm gonna try to kind of do this manually first. So what I'm looking at, you can't see this, I gotta move this. I'm looking right down here, see how it says seven? I'm gonna drag down until I have 96 numbers. I'm just doing this manually because I, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna be able to memorize that formula. 
So I'm just looking down there until that says 46. So there, there's the top half of the numbers. I'm going to turn all of those orange. And then this would be the bottom half of all the numbers. I'm going to double check and make sure that's also 46. Oh, look at that. It's also 46. I'll make that yellow. And so because it's even, it's the average of those two numbers. Do you agree with that? Now we got lucky here because notice it's exactly the same number. So I notice it's 35. So notice I can do this myself. I don't, I don't need a machine. But would I ever do that if there was a command here called equals median? Notice you got to spell it right. B3 colon B94. See, it's like it did, it's doing it for me. That's cool, right? I mean, that's why, that's why there's an Excel component to this class. If you want to make money at this or actually do this in any kind of a useful way, you need to let the machine do the work and then let it, you know, look nice when you're all finished. And then actually don't know this, is there a mode command? Equals mode. Notice mod returns the remainder after a number. And then there's mode mult and mode single, like I'm, oh, and then there's mode, there's mode down there. Okay, cool, so there is a mode. You have to start a parenthesis. Yeah, it looks like there is. So B3 colon B94. Isn't that cool? It said 315. Now, we never got down that far, did we? Remember how I kind of got got tired and gave up? So this is saying the most often is 315. Well, let's go down there and check it out. Is that true? Oh, look at that. There's five of them. That's kind of cool, right? Saved me a bunch of time. So there is an answer to mode. So there must be only one number where there's all five of them. There must have, there was some fours maybe, but that was the one that won. And it would have taken me 10 minutes to find that, right? So But let's leave it at this. Do you understand that every single one of those could be honestly reported as being the average weight for the Dallas Cowboys? Do you understand that? Notice. These two aren't that far apart, so either one of those is kind of okay, but this one is huge, isn't it? Isn't that interesting? And that's kind of random. Does that make sense? If one player dropped, lost one pound and went down to 314, then suddenly the mode could jump from 315 all the way down to 212 or something like that. So does it make sense why this one is kind of not that useful? Like that would kind of be dishonest to say that. The average weight of the Dallas Cowboys is 315 pounds. That's a true statement, but it's kind of deceptive. So we won't use that one much. Um, from my graph, would you say that graph is symmetrical or skewed? It's a little skewed. It has a little bit of a tail going to the right. In other words, there's a few really heavy players. There's a few really heavy players there. Notice that made the mean a little bit higher, exactly like we learned on that slide a second ago. Do you see that? So a few heavy players made that tail stick out further to the right, and that caused the mean to get a little bit higher. So we'd like to use 245 because it included every player. And frankly, if I was comparing one team to another, that's probably the number I would use. This is sort of the most popular kind of design. Um, just because it'll only take a second, I want to show you this really quick. Last time I taught this class last term, I had other teams on here. I have the Detroit Lions, the 49ers, the Seahawks. So just for the fun of it, even though it won't be fun, let's, so the average of the Dallas Cowboys was 245, right? So I'm gonna grab all of these Seahawks players for the same exact year. 
And remember, I can cheat with this. Notice there's 85 players, not 92. Look what their average is. Can you see that from where you're sitting? It's 244.95. What did it round? And that's interesting. Yeah, it's like, why, why, did, why did that not round? Actually, I don't know the answer to that. This time it actually reported it as a bunch of decimals. I have no idea why. But notice it's almost identical. And frankly, if it had rounded, it would have called it 245, which sort of means like those two teams have the same average weight. Therefore, there's not really an advantage. Um, no one has an advantage on the line, so to speak. Do you see how that one number kind of allows you to make a, a real comparison between a couple of teams, at least in one respect? But of course, there's all other kinds of things like pass percentage and all those sorts of things to compare. But don't you need one number? Like I can't stare at 85 numbers and compare them to 92 numbers, but by replacing it with just one, one number to represent the, the whole group. If you understand, this is, this is not hard. I hope you, and, and the other thing I would say by way of warning is like, enjoy this because this class doesn't stay, doesn't stay simple. Like it's, it's challenging over time. It, we're we're going to grow and it's going to get more challenging if you've taken this before. All right. That's enough for now. Um.